every miniature technique you must know and when to use it. What I really mean is, when and where is the right time to use each technique? What is the right time to do wet blending and where is the right place to do layering? Though many miniature painting techniques overlap and you can certainly do most techniques just about anywhere, there are some better places to use certain techniques compared to other techniques. And before we get too far, like, subscribe, buy my merchandise, support me on Patreon, and if you're wondering how to do these techniques, check out this video here. All right, let's get into it. Layering is a basic technique and it can be done anywhere and anytime. Layering is basically building a pyramid with paint where you slowly place layers of paint on top of each other in smaller and smaller steps, transitioning from your base color to your second or end goal color. Layering is one of the basic miniature painting techniques. But for me, it's not so much where do I do layering, but where do I not do wet blending? Wet blending is incredibly natural for me, and it is my go-to technique. So personally, I only do layering in areas where I can't do wet blending. But let's talk more about layering. Faces, capes, terrain, and anywhere in between, you could paint an entire model or diorama with layering. Generally, I do layering on areas where there are sudden and rather dramatic transitions of color. So like in small folds of fabric or in NMM. I also do layering on very large swaths of space, like capes or the skin on the sphincter face monster or on vehicles. For all of these, layering works great because you can systematically apply your colors and you have the complete control of exactly when and where those transitions are going to occur. You don't need to worry about if your blends are even or what your dry time is. Just apply a single layer on top of the next layer and you'll be able to achieve your goal with ease. Feathering is an intermediate technique that can be done anywhere, but must be done right after the paint is applied. Feathering is done by applying layer consistency paint to your model quickly, washing your brush off, wiping away the majority of the liquid on a paper towel off to the side, and then moving your paintbrush back and forth towards your still wet paint. Basically, whenever I do layering, I usually do feathering as well. Feathering works best when being utilized between two similar colored paints, which is why it is ideal for layering. Attempting to feather colors like green over a red base coat is probably not going to go very well. Stippling is a basic technique of taking a round or domed brush and repeatedly tapping the brush against your model. Stippling can be done anywhere and anytime. The technique of stippling can be done as layering or as wet blending. Due to the rough nature of stippling, I usually do it on areas that I'm okay with there being more texture. For example, on pants or capes, vehicles, or terrain. If you wanted a perfectly smooth gradation, then stippling is not for you. You can also do smaller, more detailed areas of stippling with a round brush. I like stippling specifically with a larger domed brush because you can cover so much ground so quickly, especially if you are using it while wet blending. Cross hatching is a basic technique that can be done anywhere, anytime. Similarly to layering, cross hatching is done by applying a first layer of paint and then slowly building on top of that until you reach your final goal. In layering, you usually do a smaller and smaller solid pass. But with cross hatching, you're actually going to build up your layers of paint by creating diagonal or crossing strokes with your paintbrush. In my workflow, stippling and cross hatching work beautifully together. And I usually do cross hatching on the even finer details that I can't reach or can't manipulate when I'm doing stippling. Like stippling, 
I like to do cross hatching on areas where the gradation doesn't need to be perfect. So again, rough surfaces, pants, capes, terrain, etc. Yes, hello baby. Ah, cardamom! No, oh, oh, fuck! You're going to get paint everywhere! Of course you get paint on your tail and then run! Dry brushing is a basic technique done by dipping your flat or domed brush into paint, wiping away the majority of your paint on a paper towel, and then pulling your brush along the raised edges of your model. Dry brushing can be done on the raised edges of your model and can be done at any time. So what does raised texture look like? Generally, it's areas like scales or fur or the raised stones of terrain, basically any Detailed raised areas is what you're going to want to do dry brushing on. Wet blending is an advanced technique that can be done on small and medium areas at any time. Wet blending is the process of blending paint together while both colors are still wet. First, you will apply your first color and pull it further down across the model than you want the blend to go. Then you'll clean your brush and apply your second color, beginning to blend it up into your first color. Then again, rinse out your brush, wring out the majority of the water, and then, using the belly of your brush, blend those two colors together. Wet blending is my go-to technique, as for me, wet blending is incredibly natural. The reason that wet blending works better on small and medium areas has to do with the dry time of your paint. Typically, the larger that an area is that you work with, the more likely that part of your paint is going to dry before you're able to fully blend all of it out. Of course, it's not impossible to wet blend larger areas, but the larger the area is, the more difficult it's going to be. If you attempt to wet blend larger areas, your paint could become patchy if your paint began to dry before you were able to fully wet blend it, and your gradations and blends may not be even. In general, I am not overly concerned about the texture of the areas that I'm trying to wet blend. I'm mostly just looking at the size and my ability to wet blend all of it before my paint dries. Glazing is an intermediate skill that should be done near the end, or at least the end of each section. Glazing can be done in any location that needs a slight shift of color. Glazing is the act of using translucent paint and attempting to blend harsh edges of color together. Commonly, this is done over the steps of your layering pyramid, but it can also be done if, for example, you were attempting to wet blend and your color was a little rough and you can still see your brush strokes from your gradation. Glazing can also be done when you are trying to subtly change colors. For example, if you're adding blush to the face of a miniature or if you're adding in color contrast in the shadows. Lining is an intermediate technique done near the end of your painting process to help define and add shadows to your model. Lining can be done in black, dark brown, dark purple, or whatever a darker hue or value is of whatever you're trying to line around. The goal of lining is to help add definition and shadow to your miniature. So if there would naturally be a shadow there, line it. If it's a change in color or texture, line it. Basically, I line everything. Edge highlining is an intermediate technique done on the edges of your model near the end of the painting process. Most commonly, edge highlighting is done on the sharp edges of armor, but it can realistically be done on any edge. If you're going to be doing a sharp edge, I utilize the side of my brush. If you're going to be denoting just the edge of a certain texture or color, then use the tip of your brush. Edge highlighting when combined with lining is a great way to add further definition to your miniature. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it was useful and helpful to you. If you like what I do here, the best way that you can support me is by joining me over on Patreon. Of course, you can also 
buy my t-shirts or stickers. Subscribe, like, comment, I love to hear from you. If you found this video useful, let me know down in the comments below. I hope that you're having a wonderful day, stay safe, and go paint more miniatures.